Can't afford an expensive capture card like an Elgato or something like that. Well, OBS recently released a plugin that should help with that. Stay with me. So streaming on a budget is something that a lot of people want to do. And uh, it's really popular. Stream Game streaming is, is a huge business right now. But uh, streaming at the highest quality, there's a lot of factors involved. A single computer as your stream PC and your game PC, well, you'll suffer some issues, uh, FPS slowdowns, things like that, maybe even issues with the stream if you try to do it all in one. Some computers can do that, especially things that have more cores. Um, you can get, get away with an i7 for doing that, but if you go to 6 cores or 8 cores, Ryzen or, or Intel, however you want to cut it, it's going to do a lot better. But other options exist out there. Now the normal option that most popular streamers use is a capture card, but capture cards that, that could do 1080p or higher at 60 frames per second, which is really where you want to be, th those capture cards are kind of expensive. Like the Elgato, for example, I mean, I've seen them anywhere from three, four hundred dollars but you can find cheaper ones as well, maybe under $200. But really, is, do you want to spend that much? Do you already have a second computer by any chance that you wanted to use as a stream PC? OBS has released this plugin. It's the NDI plugin. Now, XSplit already has the NDI plugin available to it. And what the NDI plugin lets you do is it lets you set one computer as an NDI output. And if you're outputting NDI, another computer on the same network can see that as a source. And then you stream out from there. So basically, your stream PC will be picking up your computer over the network. You take that as a source, and then you configure your stream however you want from there, and you send it out. Another method out there is using like a custom RTMP server and then you actually have to input a lot of stuff into the computer by uh, wiring Ethernet for direct from one to the other. But in that case you're going to need at least, you know, well you're going to need two Ethernet ports available on the stream PC because one is going to be taking one in from the other computer and then that one is going to be connected to the network. It's, it's a little messier is what it is. NDI makes that a lot neater. So let's look at that. Okay, so here we are in OBS, and you can see this is my stream setup, ready to go. What I would do at this point, just click start streaming and get going. But uh, let's show you NDI. So NDI, I already have the plugin installed right here under tools, you see NDI output settings. But let's get to the installation process first. So go to the internet, go ahead and search OBS NDI plugin on Google. You'll see the first result. Click that, it'll take you to their form asking about NDI and go to the last page. On the last page, you'll see a link from Dodgepong. And Dodgepong will be able to, well, Dodgepong has the link. So go ahead and click the link there. You get the link to the plugin page. Don't worry, I'll have this page linked in the description below so you don't really have to deal with any of this searching stuff I just showed you. So uh, go to download now. Make sure you read all the information on the page. And if uh, if you're using Windows, come down here to the Windows Installer.exe, click that, download it. It's a small file. Open it up, give it permission, press OK, follow through with the install process. And once that is installed, go over to OBS, open it up, and it will ask you for another um, another library. So it's going to have a link right in that little dialog box. Click that link, run that installer, reboot your computer, and then when you come back to OBS you will now see under tools the NDI output settings. So the NDI output settings being here, well go ahead and click that once your stream is ready, once your OBS is all set up. And you'll see here there will be a checkbox, unchecked right there, and uh, you, an output name. You want to name your output, any device on the network, anything else in your, in your network running OBS with the NDI plugin can also be used as a source, and I'll get into that a little more later. So name your source accordingly. My computer's Red Beast, so I'll put OBS Red Beast. Click Enable NDI Output. One thing to keep in note is when you have the NDI Output enabled, you can't make adjustments. It's just as if your computer is streaming. So you go ahead and leave this part. First, set that up the way you want it to, and then you can go ahead and get all the NDI stuff ready to go. So now that this is outputting, let's go on over to the stream PC and have a look at it from there. Okay, so we're over here now at the streaming PC. And as you can see, the uh, OBS that was up on the other computer is over here. So what I did is I set a scene, your default scene, whatever you want, over here in sources. What you have to do, I'm going to delete it from here just to show you. 
So I'm going to remove Red Beast. So you go over to Sources. You go to, what is this, NDI Source. And in NDI Source, you can name it whatever you want. You know, I'm going to call mine Red Beast since that's the computer. Now look at this, Source Name, Red Beast. So it should come up in the preview window here, but if it doesn't, don't worry about it. Just uh, go ahead and press OK. Give it a second, and here it is on your canvas. That is my computer. This is everything that's happening inside of OBS from my main computer. And I'm over here on a completely different computer in the same network. So you can go ahead and position it however you want, get it ready. And there, look at that. It looks no different than it did on my main computer. So then from here, you can just click Start Streaming. And what's coming out of this computer is what's going to go out with no impact to the main computer. That's great. That's, and it's really easy. It's really easy. It's really awesome. It's really great that this uh, that this plugin has come out. Uh, like I said, XSplit has had it, but uh, XSplit is a little heavier, a little harder on a computer. So uh, OBS is the preferred streamer's choice. So let me talk a little bit more about what can, what you can do with this though, because if you had multiple computers all in the same place, you can actually you set each of those computers up with OBS and NDI. Set each of those computers as NDI outputs the same way, right here, NDI output settings. Enable them on each of those computers. And then you come over here, you can you know make different layers of them and put them all together in the same the same window here if you wanted to do it that way. But let's say you had a, a way to change scenes, maybe use something like auto hotkeys to automatically switch back and forth between scenes. You see that? So I can go ahead and take any of those sources, add another one here, NDI source, drop it in there, and imagine that. Like the, so you could have it set up a different way, however you'd like, multiple inputs from OBS in the same network from any number of computers. And you can just switch back and forth between them. So what you would want to do is set them up in their own scene, and then you can name your scenes like, hey, this is the primary, this one's the secondary, this could be your friend's computer, it could be your other friend's computer. And you can cycle through them and your one outgoing stream, whether that be on Twitch or YouTube or any other website, will switch back and forth between whoever's screen you're on through the scenes here. So NDI is really freaking cool. So that's NDI on OBS. It's a really neat way to stream from one computer to another and set that as your stream PC. Take the load off of your main computer, put that on another computer, and that way you get to your max gaming FPS on the main computer and whatever you like, it runs just the way you want it. And uh, it's a really good tool, especially if you don't want to spend money on one of those Elgato capture cards or any other capture card or whatever, however you want to do it. So um, it's a really nice feature. Check it out. Link is in the description below. Hopefully this guide helped you out where well, as much of a guide as it is, as much as, as good as I can do that. So uh, if you like this video, click that thumbs up button, subscribe for more. There's always more coming and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.